Well, I have to admit my relationship with libraries uh, coming from the Deep South as I did is uh, a fraught one. Um, I grew up in South Louisiana. Um, public facilities were limited in the 50s and 60s uh, as the city leaders tried to control the changes that were coming through uh, integration and uh, other social changes that were coming about during that period of time. Pools were all closed. Uh, there were no branch libraries that were easy to get to. Uh, fortunately, my family were always readers and we had a small library at school, but I didn't actually discover libraries until I was in high school. I was working on um, some papers and discovered that I was able to go to the university library uh, and I could walk in and look at anything I wanted to and read anything I wanted to read and walk around and see things and just pull something down and study it. And that was a really liberating experience for me, but it didn't really happen until I was in the 10th or 11th or 12th grades. Um, and then when I got to the university, um, I was uh, spending a lot of time in the library, although I wasn't smart enough to try to get a job there. Um, foolishly, um, I spent a number of years working in catering and food service on campus and learned nothing and always came home feeling like I needed a shower, whereas if I'd had a job in the library, I would have been much cleaner and much happier. Um, but I did, uh, as I graduated from undergraduate program, uh, I decided that universities were the place that I felt I was most suited to be. Uh, my father was an accountant and thought perhaps I could be a banker. <clears throat> and I, I disabused him of that notion pretty quickly. But I didn't really have the money to go to graduate school and spend five or 10 years in debt trying to get a PhD and then wonder, you know, could I get a job as a philosopher somewhere? Most of the philosophers I knew were driving taxis. So I turned uh, with a friend of mine who was already in the library program, he said, take a look at the job ads in the Chronicle of Higher Education. There are a lot of opportunities in libraries uh, at universities around the country. And I thought, oh, that's a pretty good deal. And I had great scores and good grades, and so the library school was happy to have me at Louisiana State. And um, the rest is history. Um, uh, for me, um, my relationship to libraries is really more to the users than it is to the collection. I don't... Um, the, the collection is an important component of what it is that we do in libraries, but it is the social network that the library represents uh, that is the most significant, to me, aspect of librarianship. Um, you can do, uh, three or four good people can do a lot more than an empty room full of books uh, in terms of helping people to advance their research. I'm a professional generalist. Um, I, I never was somebody who was interested in, in learning everything about nothing. Um, I, I wanted to know uh, a little bit about everything, and uh, that's an awkward way to make a career in academia, unless uh, you happen to find yourself in the information business. So um, the library school program enabled me to participate in research, to uh, continue to study and learn, uh, but not to have to focus on raising grant money to study, you know, um, baboon nostril hairs um, in, in the field. I could actually focus on assisting other people in their research and being, um, being the information officer or the information assistant for people who were trying to collect data to use in their research work themselves. I think it's difficult in 2016 to describe that experience for people who have come to see uh, miniature screens as being windows onto the entire universe. In 1966, um, you had books in your house or you didn't. Um, you had television or you didn't and you saw what was presented to you in school and that's all you saw. And so if you had something that you wanted to know about that you didn't perhaps want to share with anyone, um, or you didn't know uh, what to call it or how to find it, uh, you were uh, out of luck um, unless you could find a place called a library uh, where you could freely walk around and say, I'm interested in this and pull it down and sit and read uh, without teacher oversight or parental oversight or 
the marketplace dictating what it was. Um, you know, without libraries, the, the most exposure that I would have had to uh, open reading material would have been in the book rack at the 7-Eleven. Um, you know, that was not a, a highly, I mean, we had plenty of books in my home. That's not the point. The point being that culturally, uh, the average high school student uh, was living in an information desert. Uh, and walking into the library and realizing uh, LSU is not as, as prominent a library as the University of Texas, but the stacks were open, which I think at that time they might not have been here. And so I could walk in and just walk up to a shelf and pull a book off and say, oh, here's Herodotus. Who was that? What did he do? Uh, you know, what happened in the 18th century in France? Uh, you know, what kind of weird animals are there in Southeast Asia? Anything I wanted to know was right there. Uh, all I had to do was fish around in the card catalog and wander up to the stacks or just go and browse the shelves. Uh, it was amazing the things that you could find. Um, my educational program was a little restrictive in college. I was a philosophy major, and philosophers are not encouraged to read widely in critical work, at least in my day. As a philosophy student, you're expected to read the classics and understand them, which is a slow process. And there's Plato, and then there's Plato, and they don't really want you to go around reading what everybody else wrote about Plato. They want you to figure it out. And so, again, the library was a place where I could go surreptitiously at times, and try to figure out what some other ideas were about the things I was studying uh, that I could begin to understand the primary works that I was supposed to be analyzing. So it was that sense of freedom, I think, that came from being in charge of my own information search and retrieval uh, that for a person who has a lot of curiosity, as I did, uh, was a real uh, you know, moment of liberation, as you say. As, as in my understanding of the history of the university and the libraries, I would say that this university, like Texas, uh, was originally a poor place with big ambitions. And one of the ambitions was to be a center of learning and scholarship. And in order to do that, uh, in those days, uh, books were needed. And there was always a uh, because Texas is a public university, there's always competition for resources, and the faculty always felt that they should have a great library, but the university's funding sources were not always so easily convinced. And so um, it took forceful personalities and strategizing over a period of time to be able to build the information resource that the faculty felt they needed to be a university of the first class. It's hard to imagine how far we've come in that century and two-thirds, but uh, the progress has been quite remarkable, and I think we have uh, many miles to go uh, in the future as we diversify our holdings, as we shift technologies, as we shift skill sets and move into uh, much closer integration with uh, the, the technology and the developments of the 21st century. Um, I think that at this point in time, we're no longer that concerned about measuring how big we are. We're trying to measure ourselves by, in terms of our effectiveness and our utility, uh, which is now less a matter of size or volume count than it is a matter of uh, speed, convenience, uh, and integration with uh, the lifestyles of the academics of today and tomorrow. I guess the only thing that I would say is that it's always been my feeling that a good library is a place to go and a person to talk to who understands what you're doing, who sympathizes with your worldview, who talks your language, and who is looking out for you in the world of information all the time. And I hope that um, we will be able to continue to maintain that sense of connection and attachment to the research process and the education process as we move forward into new technologies and into new environments.